A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Hello fellow mathematicians, I hope you are doing well, stay safe out there. We are going to talk about the summer Fibonacci numbers today and originally this was planned as a pure prerequisite video for the Fibonacci diamond but the Fib diamond doesn't allow for a closed form, no. So we uh, are just going to talk about this video today. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, some of Fibonacci numbers are actually quite interesting. What we are going to get out on the other side is, is pretty cool. It's, it's a nice closed thing, okay? Looks pretty good. So watch till the end. Also subscribe to Flamble Maths too if you haven't done so already. So we are going to dive right in. So what we are going to take a look at today is the sum of the Fibonacci numbers. Up until the end Fibonacci numbers, so if this were to be going to infinity, okay, so up until the infinity Fibonacci number, this wouldn't work out because it would diverge, okay. If I add more and more positive things together, it's going to suck, okay, if they are greater than one. So what we are going to take a look at today is this implication doesn't make any sense to be honest is the sum being bounded between 0 and n of the kth Fibonacci number okay summing them up up until the n Fibonacci number in some way um, at first let's take a look at the definition of the Fibonacci numbers the kth Fibonacci number with respect to its re recursive definition um, so we know that fk the kth Fibonacci number for example 5 it's the 1 2 3 4 5 6 Fibonacci number is nothing but the Fibonacci number before it plus the Fibonacci number before the Fibonacci number before it <laughs> okay so <laughs> Just as a little side note here, this is how they are defined. And now, just for um, trying out purposes, let us plug the fk into here and see what we are going to get. We are going to get the sum being bounded between 0 and n of fk minus 1 plus fk minus 2. Ah, okay. Um, what would happen if we were to plug in our indices right here, okay? With, with zero, we are going to get negative one Fibonacci number plus the negative two Fibonacci number. <laughs> doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, it does make perfect sense. You can extend the Fibonacci numbers to ordinary numbers. I did do so before, but um, we are strictly going to speak about the positive Fibonacci numbers. So Fibonacci numbers of the negative order really don't make any sense right now. This is why we need to get a bit creative here, working around with the indices. And we are going to do a little index shift here on our original recursive definition. And this index shift actually does make perfect sense if you start summing up the first few Fibonacci numbers and try to see a pattern here. This is what we're going to do at the end to motivate it a bit further. So what we are going to do is we are going to get rid of those negative indices. Our lowest negative indice would start at negative two, so why not add a 2 to each and every index. Okay, does make kind of sense. We are going to do an index shift from k to k plus 2, meaning fk plus 2 is thus equal to fk plus 1 plus fk. Hey, and there we go. This got us rid of this um, weird problem with the indices, meaning we are going to solve for fk. fk is thus nothing but fk plus 2 minus fk plus 1. Now we can plug this into here. So this is fk plus 2 minus fk plus 1. And this already got rid of the biggest problem here. Now we can start computing and see if we can find a certain nice pattern. Oh yeah, we are going to do so. We are going to do so, mate. Let's plug it in. With 0, we are going to get, okay, plug 0 into here. This is f2 minus f1. Okay, next up, plugging 1 to here is going to give us plus f3 minus f Two. Mmm, that's spicy, mate. Oh, are they going to cancel? Yeah, they are going to cancel. Additive inverses, my boy. Now we are going to add, um, let's go through a few more iterations, f4 to it and subtract f3 from it. Pretty easy pattern. Then we are going to go ahead and sum a bunch of stuff up. Then for the n minus 1 iteration, we are going to get f n plus 1 and then minus f n. Okay, minus fn because of like n minus 1 here. This does work out. And now for the nth iteration, we are going to get plus fn plus 1. 
um, Fn plus 2, I'm terribly sorry. Yes, Fn plus 2, minus Fn plus 1. And now you can see that a lot of stuff is going to cancel out. It's a, well, it's a telescoping sum that we are having here. F2 and F2 is going to cancel out, F3 and F3 is going to cancel out, F4 and F4 is going to cancel out. Also, Fn plus 1 and Fn plus 1 are going to cancel out. Obviously, Fn and Fn are going to cancel out, leaving us with simply Fn plus 2 minus F1. And F1 is exactly the first Fibonacci number, which is 1. Fn plus 2 minus 1. It was really easy, right? I mean, this is pretty cool. Um, we are going to be left with just this expression, which is pretty cool if you ask me. It's pretty easy to evaluate. Meaning, if we were to sum up to the, um, let's say, 6 Fibonacci number. So 6 Fibonacci number is 5. Then we are going to get, okay? So our n was 6, meaning we are going to get up to 8 in our index, so the next one is going to be 8, and after that we are going to get 13, meaning this makes 13 minus 1 is 12, okay, as our answer. Let us see if this holds. So we are going to have 1 plus 1 plus 2 is going to give us 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 5 is going to give us 12. Does work out <laughs> pretty nice, right? And we can already see this pattern if we just start to compute a bunch of stuff. So let us compute the first few Fibonacci number sums. Uh, let's say 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 is nothing but obviously 4. And what is 4? Well, 4 is nothing but 5 minus 1. Okay, meaning we stopped here at this Fibonacci number, then we are going to add two more indices to it. So we are going to go up to the this was the fourth Fibonacci number, this is the six, so F6, which does make sense with our formula that we got, and then subtract one from it. What about the next one? Let us do this, and then we are going to add the three to it. Okay, that's obviously going to give us seven, and seven is eight minus one. Okay, and this does make sense. From three to eight, two more Fibonacci numbers, and then subtract one. And he can just continue this process. If we were to add a five to it, we are going to get 12. We just had this case. And then we are basically done. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, recommend, share, like, and if you want to watch it a bit more, buy your see as I create or support channel on Patreon. I'm, I'm so mentally disabled at this point. I'm going to take this video. I wish you guys a full day. Ciao.